Live from the Ball State News Center, this is NewsLink Indiana in high definition. Good evening and welcome to NewsLink Indiana. I'm Tanner Holbrook. And I'm Michael Kuhn. Thanks for joining us. Tonight, David Letterman returned home to Ball State University. Dave started the night with a huge thank you to Ball State for inviting him. The alum sat down with filmmaker Spike Jones and Bennett Miller. The audience got a kick out of Dave's witty humor that left people in happy tears. And now, ladies and gentlemen, to begin the show, please extend a wonderful welcome home to our favorite son, David Letterman. I am so lucky to have been invited back. Uh, I want to thank everybody here. I want to thank everybody on campus. And I want to thank the people who run uh, this university. It's, it's an honor to be lucky enough to maintain this association. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. at Ball State. The former television host announced that his late night set and memorabilia will be donated to the university. The Star Press says the set will be featured in the Letterman Building on campus. Millions of Americans are taking to the internet to get a little bit of shopping done today. Cyber Mondays bring deals from all sorts of retailers. Amazon is putting out a new deal every five minutes and expects today to be its most profitable ever. Bridget Shanahan reports. Today it's our busiest day, it's like the Super Bowl at Amazon. This Cyber Monday is expected to bring the internet giant its biggest sales day ever. And the Amazon Fulfillment Facility in Kenosha has only been open for a couple months. But the employees here have extra help from robots. So they help our employees be more efficient. And they let them walk less and they actually bring the products to them. So they bring the products to them, then they drop in the box and ship them out to customers around the world. This place is huge. It's about the size of 28 football fields, and there's 11 miles of conveyor belts just like this. All these yellow bins are getting sorted right now based on how the items will be packaged. The National Retail Federation predicts 121 million people will go shopping today looking for those Cyber Monday deals. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I know there are a lot of movies and things like that in Best Buy that like my boyfriend or my other friends want, so that's an easy thing to go look for quick. You must do research to find out what people are after and what is going to make the biggest impact, right? For sure. And you know, this year Frozen is still big, so you can get a Frozen hoodie. It's, a, it's on sale today. You can also, you know, Star Wars. Star Wars, and I got another movie coming out. It's on sale. This Verbaca yeah. is on sale 50% off. But not everyone is online looking for those special prices. I didn't even go Black Friday shopping. I'm not really into the crowds. And um, I've heard on Cyber Monday, you know, sales go really fast. So I just, I don't know, too much rushing. Yeah, it sounds like those are some pretty good deals. You know, what might not be a good deal is the weather coming up, and I hear that there's some rain in the forecast. Yeah, I mean, we, ha we did have some nice weather over Thanksgiving, but sounds like that might not stay. Nathan? Yeah, so today temperatures started off on the cool side, and we're going to talk about them in a minute, but then we warmed up to a high today of 48 degrees, so definitely two ends of the spectrum overall, but looking at morning lows all across the state of Indiana this morning, 36 degrees in Indianapolis, 38 degrees in Terre Haute, 34 degrees to start the day here in Muncie. Once again, highs all across the state of Indiana warmed up to, well, 50 degrees and just a tad bit below 46 degrees in Kokomo, 47 degrees in Lafayette today and 48 degrees here in Muncie. Looking at the current temperature outside, 46 degrees with those winds out of the east at 9 miles per hour. Our feel like temperature at the top of the hour, 41 degrees, and it's due to that easterly wind that's letting us cool down just on the, on the low end. However, still cloudy at this time. 10 p.m. tonight, 46 degrees with again those east southeast winds out of the out of the east from 8 to 10 miles per hour overnight tonight by 1 a.m. 45 degrees and even by 4 a.m. still 45 degrees overnight low tonight 44 degrees and that's what we're forecasting tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. The kiddos will need a jacket in the morning if you are uh, putting them out at the bus stop and also if you're headed out to class by 3 p.m. However, we will warm up to 48 degrees, but skies will be cloudy. Coming up, my full forecast. 
forecast. We're going to talk about more about that precipitation chance and when it returns, when the sunny skies are going to return back to the forecast just in time for your weekend, and then what are those average temperatures as we begin the month of December tomorrow. All right, Nathan, thank you. The man suspected of killing three people at a Colorado Planned Parenthood made his first appearance in court earlier today. Currently, his true motives are still unknown. As Andrew Spencer reports, the man's neighbors seem to know very little about him. There's not much to look at or do out here. In a rural community of Colorado, Robert Deere's handful of neighbors had few interactions with him. When they first moved in, they were real, you know, like I said, they kept to themselves. They didn't bother anybody. Nobody bothered them. A really nice guy, you know, was talking to us and everything. Gave us uh, some anti-Obama uh, flyers, little pamphlets, and I didn't even really read them. I just... I think I used them to start the fire in our campfire that night. A law enforcement official says Deer expressed anti-abortion and anti-government views to investigators, but says Deer's motives aren't entirely clear. Police say Deer surrendered at the end of a six-hour standoff on Friday after shooting and killing three people and wounding nine others at a Planned Parenthood clinic in Colorado Springs. The mayor says unless there's some sort of threat beforehand, these types of shootings are tough to prevent. It's very difficult for law enforcement um, to, to deal with individuals like this who don't uh, commit serious uh, crimes and get themselves on the radar that way. During his time in the Carolinas, Deere had a spotty record with the law, but he was never convicted of a crime. His wife accused him of domestic assault in 1997, but didn't press charges. In 2002, counts of being a peeping Tom were dismissed. In 2003, Deere went to a bench trial on charges of animal cruelty. He was found not guilty. But his history raises more questions in the aftermath of Friday's attack. I'm Andrew Spencer reporting. The University of Chicago was closed today after a 21-year-old student threatened to kill students and staff. Jabari Dean posted the threat on social media over Thanksgiving break. The apparent motive behind the threat was to avenge the death of Laquan McDonald. McDonald was shot 16 times by a police officer and Dean threatened to shoot 16 white male students and or staff. Dean was arrested without incident. He was expected to, he to appear in court earlier today. All right, find out when we return going gr how going green can help rel rel relieve stress at Ball State. And a Ball State student has qualified for one of the biggest marathons in the country. This and more when NewsLink Indiana returns. So I just moved in with his family and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this for his sake. Welcome back to NewsLink Indiana. Charles Mad Dog Whittington, a Portland man who was convicted of a double homicide earlier this month, received a maximum 170-year prison sentence today. A Blackford Circuit Court jury found Whittington guilty of two counts of murder in, in the February 5th killing of Shane Williamson and his teenage daughter. Today, Judge Dean Young, who imposed the maximum sentence, called Whittington a monster and went on to say to Whittington, quote, Know this, I would execute you back if I could. Whittington has 30 days to appeal his convictions. Ball State has many hidden gems that students don't know about. One could argue that the Ball State Rennard Orchid Greenhouse is one. Located on the edge of campus, the greenhouse is open Monday through Saturday, offering the community more than just flowers. Anyone can come at any time. They offer tours, meditation, and a place to escape the hustle of everyday life. It's a great place to come when you know, you're stressed or you're cold in the winter or, you know, you feel overwhelmed, you can come here and look at the plants and flowers or uh, do your homework, write a paper, listen to music, and really do anything here. I recommend that if, if it's brown and gray and cloudy outside, come on in here and, and experience your tropical paradise. And you can come any time of the year, but it really has a, a wider contrast in the winter. So the people who discover this place keep coming back.
For more information about the greenhouse, you can visit its website or the theballstatedaily.com. Ball State students will now be able to get around campus for more hours during the winter months. The Blue Loop bus on campus, which previously ran until 4.20 in the afternoon, will now run until 9.30 at night, Monday through Thursday. The bus route will continue to run through 4.20 on Fridays until spring break. The extended hours come in part as a result of the current Student Government Association's platform. Ball State student Devon Geiger recently qualified to run in the 2017 Boston Marathon. Geiger qualified for the oldest race in the United States in a recent race in Indianapolis by running a time of 3 hours, 1 minute, and 16 seconds, just 4 seconds under the men's qualifying time for 18 to 24-year-old men. Geiger says that it brings honor to be able to run for something that is bigger than yourself. It's going to be really touching to cross that historic finish line. Very exciting for him, I'm sure. Coming up, find out if, you're, if you'll need an umbrella for the coming days. Newslink Indiana weather is next. Of all the things you've done with your bike, donating it to Goodwill may be the most incredible of all. Your donations help fund job placement and training for people in your community, which means your stuff can be more powerful than you think. Goodwill. Donate stuff. Create jobs. Welcome back to Newslink Indiana. Tomorrow is the first day of December. Nathan, what type of temperatures can we expect as we head into the new month? Well, actually, temperatures here in the state of Indiana are going to be a little bit above average for this time of year as we plow into the first week of December as we come. But first, I want to start here with their last 12 hours of radar loop showing a strong low pressure system that's dumping snowfall all across the Midwest. And this is exactly what we won't be seeing here in Indiana exactly right away, but something to keep in mind closer back to home. We are seeing that overall cloudy skies throughout the whole state of Indiana and then a a few scattered rain showers in the northwestern part of the state as we talk right now. Current temperatures all across the state, 46 degrees here in Muncie, 46 degrees in Indianapolis, 47 in places like Terre Haute right now. So overall pretty decent. However, we do have some breezy conditions and some wind gusts uh, associated out there still. And that's making the temperature here in Muncie feel like 41 degrees, 41 degrees in Indianapolis and even Lafayette. Just a little bit on the cool side. So you definitely need to grab the jacket if you're headed out this evening. Looking at those wind, temp uh, looking at the wind speeds currently out of the east at nine miles here in Muncie, uh, factoring into those wind chills that we do have. Let's start. Let's start here with Precision Cast Monday at 9 p.m. units. That we continue to see those cloudy skies stick around and even a few scattered rain showers. Nothing that'll amount to much, but we do have to mention it. Overall tonight, 45 degrees is your uh, load this evening, along with a chance of rain with the winds out of the east at five to ten miles per hour, jumping back to Precision Cast. Looking here and stopping at Wednesday at 7 a.m. You notice those cloudy conditions return again for the Wednesday forecast. And with that forecast comes a little bit of a chance of precipitation. Wednesday is our next significant chance that we could see some precipitation. Now this precipitation is looking to start out as rain and then trans over into a mix and then even some snow flurries to end the day on Wednesday. You notice that that system moves through as that low pressure that's currently in Iowa pushes through our area here at home. Looking at the rainfall accumulation with precision cast. Nothing significant at this time. Six hundredths of an inch is possible in Muncie between now and Wednesday at 9 a.m. Looking at tomorrow's forecast, partly cloudy skies with a chance of showers in the morning hours. 49 degrees as the daytime high with those winds out of the south at 5 to 15 miles per hour. Make sure you pack a jacket just in case we do see a couple sprinkles in the morning hours. And then looking at your seven day forecast, we talked about Wednesday being the next significant chance for some precipitation with a high of 40 <coughs> degrees on Wednesday and then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, sunny skies, partly cloudy skies in store. But I do want to mention something about the temperatures around here because this time of year getting into December, we're expecting those average temperatures of the 40s as our daytime high and 30s as our lows in the evening. And so if you look at the seven day forecast, you notice that temperatures are going to continue to fall into that December like pattern. So overall, we're getting into the start of the month with those average temperatures. All right, well, thank you so much. You know, I'm actually looking forward to a little bit of snow, you know, on Wednesday, you know, that'd be nice. 
Well, the Ball State men's basketball team prepares for tomorrow's matchup against IUPUI. And we preview the start of the high school basketball season after this. You wanted to be a teacher when you were little, but things changed. Teaching didn't seem that cool anymore. So you decided to become something else. But what would your 12-year-old self say? Amazing things are happening in teaching, so it's time to put it back on your list. Don't try to convince yourself otherwise. You had it right the first time. Welcome back to Newslink Indiana. I'm Josh Shelton with sports. To start things off, the Ball State men's basketball team has been firing on all cylinders the last four games. They have outscored their opponents 309 to 247 in those four games. But the real reason for the Cardinals' recent success is finding the middle ground between offense and defense. Newslink Indiana caught up with Coach James Whitford for his thoughts on the upcoming game against IUPUI. We're pretty similar. If you look at our Ken Pomeroy numbers were, I mean, we're, I think we're four points higher on offense than we are on defense. And um, so I think we're pretty balanced. You know, I, I, I do think uh, if you're going to be great at one, I think it's more important to be great at defense. And I think I, I, it's really important to me that we lock in. And I know we have a lot more in the tank on that area. And we have to keep getting better. And I think this team really challenges us. I think they're hard to play against. And I think it's going to be. They set a million different pick and rolls, and their big guys are very skilled. So when they use a pick and roll, it's not like you just can say, hey, if, as long as I stop the guard, we're good. It's not the case. I mean, they throw back to their bigs, and they can really hurt you. So, um, so it's a challenge. It's been a challenge for everybody that's played against them, and it's going to be a challenge for us. The 5-2 and two Cardinals will play tomorrow at 7 in Warthern Arena. The high school basketball season is upon us here in Delaware County and there are some big games to start off the season. In a matchup of the Tigers, Yorktown takes on the 1-1 one one Alexandria Tigers in Alexandria. The Yorktown Tigers are coming off a 72-49 blowout loss to Munchie Central. They will look to turn it around tomorrow night. The Delta Eagles will host Winchester in their home opener as both teams will be playing their first games of the season and will look to start their seasons off with a win. The 2-0 West Dell Warriors will look to keep their win streak alive against Union City, but the Indians are also undefeated, so only one team will emerge with an unblemished record. And now to finish off the basketball trifecta, the Pacers travel to Los Angeles to take on the aging Kobe Bryant and his Lakers. Kobe greets some players who sport their Hoosier jerseys for the night. The Lakers start things off in the first quarter, down one. Here's Kobe, passes it, and he will air ball a three. He's going to walk back and try to laugh it off. Down on the other end, Monte Ellis drives down the lane and flicks a pass to Paul George, who finishes it with a big layup in the second quarter. There's a shot from George Hill. It clanks off the rim. It's rebounded by Randall, who passed. is stolen by George, who takes his time and drains a three-pointer to put the Pacers up. 67 to 46. Later in the third, Nick Young drives, shakes his defender, and hits a step back three to pull the Lakers within nine points. Late in the fourth quarter, Kobe is inbounded. The ball takes a step and swishes a three with a defender in his face to make it a one point ball game. The Lakers now down three. Kobe again gets it, gets the ball, and throws it up and air balls it. Kobe. Not happy with his performance as the Pacers go on to win it 107-103. After the game, Kobe announced that this would be his last year in the NBA. The 11-5 Pacers will stay in Los Angeles to take on the Clippers on Wednesday. It should be a good game as the Clippers have won their last two and the Pacers continue to put tallies up in the win column. Yeah, you know, it's really great to see uh, Cardinals men's basketball doing well again. Thanks, yeah. Josh. Uh, when we come back, Adele continues to dominate the music charts. And if you want that Beyonce look, don't worry, you may get your chance. Find out how when we return with your Newslink Entertainment.
Welcome back, I'm Marquise G, and here's your entertainment news for tonight. For all you Adele fans out there, you all know Adele's new album, 25, is undoubtedly a miraculous album taking over Billboard's Top 100, dominating all records back to NSYNC and Britney Spears' Oops, I Did It Again. Here's a few facts on the third studio album by Adele released this past November. 3.38 million copies have been sold to date. 25 sold more albums in one week than Taylor Swift's 1989 sold in one year. Despite this being the age of music downloading, 1.71 million physical copies were sold upon the album's release. And finally, there are rumors that Adele's release of 25 is what's holding back Rihanna's release of her new album, Anti. No matter the stats and facts, we are all glad to have Adele back and hope she remains in this creative light and brings more of her musical talent to the table. Mark your calendars for April 2016. Beyonce is joining in partnership with Top Shop Athletics for a new fashion-inspired fitness line. This line has been in the works since October 2014, but no additional details have been released at this time as to what the line will consist of in any of the styles that will be featured. However, if this line is expected to be as big as B's career itself, then shoppers will be lined up for blocks come April. That's all for tonight. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Marquise. Let's have a final look at weather with Nathan. Yeah, so tomorrow is going to look like it's going to be pretty decent overall. It'll be one of our warmer days in our seven day forecast. Tomorrow's high 49 degrees. We'll have those rainy chances in the morning and then uh, ending up to be a cloudy day. And then for the daytime on Wednesday, we are tracking those cloudy conditions to move back in the area with a daytime high of 40 degrees. However, we are tracking that chance of seeing some rain showers turning into some sleet and then even into some snow flurries late on Wednesday night and then Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Partly cloudy skies and sunny skies return to the area, yet the temperatures are going to remain pretty much average for this time of year, where we'll see highs on Thursday at around 40, and then on Thursday, excuse me, on Friday, 43 degrees is our daytime high. So overall, a decent forecast in store for people here in Muncie, and if you're out and about on campus, that's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. The, the sun in the forecast is what I'm excited for. You know, it's been so cloudy recently, it seems like, you know, and it, with these winter months, you know, it's it's cold and it's dreary and cloudy uh, you know what what might be causing some of that yeah, so we are getting into the first couple we first couple days of December and a lot of talk about El Nino and what that means for our winter weather pattern and uh, what that means is that we're going to see a milder winter here in Indiana and that's not necessarily due to a lot of factors, but it's due to warming in the southern Pacific Ocean, which causes a shift in the weather patterns here in the United States particularly. Mm -hmm. So we definitely will see those conditions as we head into the months of December. Very interesting. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Nathan, for that. Well, that's all for tonight for Newslink Indiana. Be sure to watch tomorrow night at 9 p.m. right here on Cardinal Vision. And be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Have a good night.